5 Reasons Why You Need the Holy Spirit The Holy Spirit gives us supernatural power. Jesus said in Acts 1 6, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Right about now is when you should cry out, Holy Spirit, come upon me. The Holy Spirit gives us supernatural gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7 tells us. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. The Holy Spirit helps us build our faith. Jude 20 says, But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love. The Holy Spirit gives life and strength to our bodies. Romans 8.11 says, And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. The Holy Spirit helps us resist temptation. Romans 8.13 says, For if you live according to the flesh you will die, but if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. And Galatians 5.16 says, So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. If you're struggling with temptation of any kind, pray for the Holy Spirit to help you. He is your helper. He's right there, waiting on you to ask. Paul says in Romans 8 9, If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. God has made it clear that we are his preferred agents of change to the world through the Holy Spirit. But sometimes, when truly no one is available, he'll go straight for us himself. This is Ali, and he met Jesus while hanging out at Mecca. Yeah, you heard me, Mecca, the epicenter for the Muslim faith. When he was younger, Ali was a raging alcoholic, and his drinking got so bad that he moved away from his wife and children in Turkey to Saudi Arabia, simply to protect them from himself. While there, some Muslim friends of his talked him into going on Hajj to Mecca, the great pilgrimage to the holiest place in Islam. So I decided to go. And when I went there, everybody needs to sleep together. And everybody also goes seven times around the Kaaba. And they were also going to do the namaz. And there I said, well, maybe something good will come of it. And I did the namaz, the ritual prayers also. But I was very ashamed, because I didn't believe in it, and yet I was still doing it. So, everybody that night sleeps around the Kaaba. So I slept there. And then, in the night, I had this dream, and in the dream, Jesus came. First, he touched my forehead with his hand, and he said, You have been saved. You have been saved. Then he opened his hand and placed it on my chest, and he said, You belong to me. One of them, he said, you are saved, and then you belong to me. And he was smiling. And this is what I wanted to say. This is what he looked like. From his waist up, he was naked and shining pure white. He had a beard, like in the pictures, but a little bit longer. His hair and his beard, it was as if every hair was electrified light shining from every hair. That's how handsome he was. And when he smiled, 
His teeth were shining white. And I was amazed at the way he stood there. And the lower part of him was like a cloud of melted iron. And in that cloud, he was taken up. And then a voice from here started to talk. And it was really moving around, in the same way that your mouth moves around when you talk. This voice started from right here. That's how it felt to me. So I woke up my friend, and I said to my friend, Hey, look, do you hear that voice? He said, no. I said, but I've had this dream. I saw Jesus. He said, you ate too much food last night. You've gotten sick. Go back to sleep. What business does Jesus have in Muhammad's capital? So I tried to go back to sleep, but the voice wouldn't let me. It kept talking to me, just like I'm talking to you. And when it was morning time, the friends came over to me and they said, let's continue on the pilgrimage. And the voice was saying, no, you're not going to go. It wouldn't let me. And the voice was saying to me, go and collect all your stuff and go back to your country. Look for your friends and find them. I didn't understand, but I made up my mind. Okay, I've decided I'm not going to go. I didn't understand it myself. So then I went and took a shower so that I could go back to where I had been. So in order to take a shower, I got undressed. And I looked in this little mirror, and this part was white. But at that time, my hair, my beard, my mustache, there wasn't a single white hair anywhere. And there was this white everywhere. And so I tried to wipe it off. And when I wiped it, it didn't come off. I wiped it with water and soap, and it still didn't go away. And this voice said to me, I'm going to show you even more things than this. And then, since I knew it was Jesus, Right there in the bathroom, I got down on my knees, because the only thing I knew to worship was to go down on my knees. So I got on my knees and I said, yes, Jesus, whatever you say, I'm going to do it. It's been years since this encounter, and his hair is beginning to gray. But to this day, his chest hair is still white where Jesus touched him in his dream.